Is it true? Don't ask me about my business. No. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 movies that almost made actors quit. 5.30, jazzercise. 6.30, dinner with me. I can't cancel that again. We can't run away from our responsibilities and the people we need to protect. This is who we are. Okay, welcome to Wayne's World. Party on, Garth. Party on, Wayne. For this list, we'll be looking at films that reportedly pushed their stars to the brink for a variety of reasons, prompting them to consider leaving the production or show business altogether. Which tough film production is the last one that you'd want to be part of? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Interview with the Vampire – Brad Pitt he kept it a secret at the time, but it turns out that Brad Pitt did not enjoy his time as Louis de Pointe du Lac. Nice. Don't be frightened. I want this opportunity. Fifteen years after the release of this influential gothic horror film, the leading man opened up to Entertainment Weekly and revealed some juicy details. We reached the Mediterranean. I wanted those waters to be blue. But they were black. As it turns out, the somber tone of the film, paired with the dimly lit studio and depressing weather in London, had Pitt feeling down about the entire thing. Don't worry. Soon, you'll be sleeping as soundly as you've ever slept. As he tells it, he was miserable to the point that he actually tried to bow out mid-production. When he was told that it would cost him $40 million to do so, however, he opted to tough it out. For you, eternity in a box. Number 19, Robin Hood, Russell Crowe. The story of Robin Hood has been told by Hollywood many times, but has yet to receive a proper modern retelling. It'll make a fine pin cushion. When production began in 2008 for this version, it was originally supposed to chronicle the Sheriff of Nottingham, but things went off the rails quickly. In addition to casting problems, the biggest issue was the script. Russell Crowe took issue with the tone, claiming it, quote, read like CSI Sherwood Forest. There's a lot to learn. Like what? I can teach you how to tie knots. I can teach you which wood to get to make the ball stronger. Crow and director Ridley Scott both requested rewrites, with the former explaining that without them, he was, quote, not interested in that incarnation. The laws of this land enslave people to its king. A king who demands loyalty but offers nothing in return. It seems like the writers here couldn't decide who the movie was actually about, and as a result, this revisionist tale got skewered by critics. <laughs> Number 18, 12 Rounds, John Cena. Bad script, egos, and casting can figuratively push actors to the edge, but 12 Rounds pushed John Cena to the edge, literally. Uh, hey, hey, no! This WWE Studios production saw Cena's cop character, Danny Fisher, trying to save his fiancée from a criminal mastermind. Molly Porter's phone. Let me talk to her. How do you know she's not dead already? In order to do so, Fisher has to complete 12 rounds of death-defying challenges, including one where he rappels down the side of a building and dangles mid-air. I got it. The pro wrestler later explained on a DVD extra that he had a fear of heights and that the stunt nearly made him quit the project entirely. Can you blame him? What are you getting soft on me? How about you give me something that's gonna be a challenge, huh? Number 17, 9 to 5, Lily Tomlin. While certain stars can churn out bombs without the stink sticking to them, others have their careers derailed by one bad film. So when you find yourself feeling ridiculous during shooting, anxiety and self-consciousness can set in. Oh, will you just slow down? Let's not panic, let's not panic. Lily Tomlin is a legend of the big and small screen. As such, we like to think that no role, however silly, could tarnish her reputation.
but when she saw her performance in the dailies for 9 to 5, talking to birds that had yet to be animated in, she reportedly offered to reimburse her salary to let her walk. <laughs> Tomlin stuck it out, however, and the film proved a major hit. She even expressed interest in a sequel. I think it was poison. Right again. I think you did it. <laughs> Number 16. Resident Evil – Mila Jovovich Before filming even began, star Mila Jovovich almost called it quits on Resident Evil. <laughs> After Michelle Rodriguez was added to the cast, however, hot off her breakout role in Girl Fight, the movie's writer and director, Paul W.S. Anderson, rewrote the script. It's okay, we're here to help. We seem to be in some sort of... According to Jovovich, the rewrites gave all of her big action scenes to Rodriguez. She thought about quitting, but fortunately, she was able to sit down with Anderson and talk it over. There's a cure! You're gonna be okay! I was beginning to worry. It all worked out in the end, with Jovovich staying on as Alice and going on to marry Anderson. Number 15, Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, Jessica Alba. This 2007 sequel made Jessica Alba consider quitting acting altogether. According to Alba, during an emotional scene, director Tim Story told her that her crying looked too real and that she should cry pretty. When she apparently failed to do so, Alba was told to skip the tears and that they'd CGI them in later. Ouch. You need to relax. Take a deep breath. Slower. The feedback undermined her confidence, and she wondered if she should throw in the towel. Considering how poorly received the film was, maybe a little bit of genuine vulnerability is what the movie needed. People don't generally cry pretty. That's not really how crying works. What the hell was that? We'll make adjustments. Next time, we'll be ready. Next time. <laughs> There's no next time. Number 14, Rocky IV, Carl Weathers. The master of disaster, the one and only In the fourth Rocky installment, Carl Weathers' Apollo Creed goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dolph Lundgren's Ivan Drago in what proves to be the fight of a lifetime. During filming, the scene got a little too rough for Carl Weathers' tastes. In one take, Lundgren, getting into the role, threw Weathers across the ring, which the Apollo Creed actor did not take well. What are you guys doing? This is supposed to be an exhibition! You understand? An exhibition! In fact, according to Sylvester Stallone, he stormed out of the ring, announcing that he was going to call his agent and quit. Fortunately, Stallone eventually managed to convince Weathers to return, and production was able to finish. I didn't stop this fight. No matter what. Number 13, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, Zoe Saldana. Before she was Gamora in the MCU, Uhura in Star Trek, or Neytiri in Avatar, Zoe Saldana was Anna Maria. Anna Maria. Arguably her biggest role at the time, Anna Maria was a pirate who was willing to stand up to Jack Sparrow. While Saldana made a big impression on viewers, she apparently didn't get much respect on set. We must fight! Load the guns! With what? Anything! The experience was so bad, in fact, that she contemplated changing careers altogether. The disrespect came not from her castmates, but from others behind the scenes. As she told The Hollywood Reporter, quote, People were disrespecting me because they look at my number on a call sheet and they think I'm not important. Thankfully, she persevered. You stole my boat. Actually. Borrowed. Borrowed without permission. Number 12. The Fast and the Furious. Michelle Rodriguez. 
Numerous films and two decades into this franchise, it's hard to imagine anyone else in the role of Letty Ortiz. Go! I'm pulling up to distract them! But when Michelle Rodriguez saw what the screenwriters had planned for her character, she was ready to walk. Why don't you girls just pack it up before I leave tread marks on your face? The original plot had Letty being romantically torn between Brian and Dom. And based on the character's personality and background, that didn't sit right with Rodriguez. You look a bit tired. I think you should go upstairs and give me a massage. Look at all our guests. How about we go upstairs and you give me a massage? And so, at the risk of getting off the ride before it even began, she pushed back, even going so far as to threaten to quit. Thankfully, the powers that be recognized that she had the right instinct, and adjusted the story to make Brian and Mia romantically involved. And the rest is cinematic history. See ya! Number 11, The French Connection, Gene Hackman. William Friedkin's action thriller is regarded as one of the greatest films ever made, but production was fraught with tension between Friedkin and star Gene Hackman. Hackman was uncomfortable with the role due to his character, Jimmy Popeye Doyle's violent and racist nature. Friedkin hadn't actually wanted Hackman to get the part, and sensing the actor's reluctance to let loose, deliberately antagonized him, hoping to ignite the actor's anger. Now I'm gonna bust your ass for those three bags, and I'm gonna nail you for picking your feet in Poughkeepsie. After a scene where Hackman's character has to beat up a drug pusher in an alley, he told Friedkin to consider replacing him. Fortunately, Hackman stuck with it and ended up winning an Academy Award for Best Actor. We're gonna sit here all night if we have to. Number 10, Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. Daisy Ridley. You, you're afraid that you will never be as strong as Darth Vader. Most actors would kill for a role in Star Wars, but when you actually land one, as Daisy Ridley discovered when she got the part of Rey, you suddenly find yourself with a lot of weight on your shoulders. It is, after all, the lead role in one of the biggest movie franchises of all time. Are you offering me a job? Wouldn't be nice to you. Doesn't pay much. You're offering me a job. On her first day on set, director J.J. Abrams gave her the feedback that her performance was wooden. Upon hearing this, Ridley had a slight panic attack and reportedly considered walking away from the project due to the pressure. You will remove these restraints and leave this cell with the door open. Luckily, she didn't, and both Abrams and fans alike were delighted with her performance as the saga's newest heroine. I can do this. I can do this. Number 9. The Harry Potter Franchise Emma Watson Emma Watson and Hermione Granger will forever be linked in our minds. Oculus, repair room. Although it was her first professional acting role, Watson came to embody the character. You've got dirt on your nose, by the way. Did you know? But it was what they had in common that almost drove them apart. Both are extremely intelligent and academically inclined, and Watson ended up wondering if she should quit the franchise to focus on school. Oh, well done. See here, everyone. This great has done it! She also described feeling uncomfortable with the fame that the role brought, having trouble recognizing herself in the mirror, and considering leaving acting altogether. Fortunately, Watson was able to juggle both interests, graduating from Brown University with a bachelor's degree in English literature in 2014. Alert the order if you can. Are you mental? We're going with you. It's too dangerous. When are you going to get into your head? We're in this together. Number eight. The Godfather, Al Pacino. Hard though it is to remember, there's a time when the legendary Al Pacino did not have his pick of roles. You can break off from the Corleone family and go on your own. After we make the move to Nevada. And when filming Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather, Pacino was not feeling the love from the producers involved, who wanted someone else to play the role of Michael Corleone. Because it insults my intelligence. It makes me very angry. As the story goes, they actually wanted him fired after the first few weeks, and so Pacino almost gave them what they wanted. Good thing he didn't. Fredo, you're my older brother, and I love you. But don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. Ever. The director encouraged him to persevere, and his performance went on to garner universal praise. The role also earned him two Oscar nominations across the franchise. I mean, in five years, the Corleone family is going to be completely legitimate. 
Trust me, that's all I can tell you about my business. Number seven, Batman, Michael Keaton. With so many comic book movies getting made these days, it's safe to say that costume designers have perfected the art of the superhero outfit. Back when Michael Keaton played Batman for the first time, however, they had a long way to go. What are you? I'm Batman. In an attempt to get away from the sillier aesthetic of the 1960s Batman, Keaton was outfitted with a sexy black number that helped give the actor more wow factor. Unfortunately, it also gave him crippling claustrophobia. To make matters worse, the actor didn't get to try on the outfit until just hours before shooting began. What is all this? The police have got it wrong. They're looking for one product. The Joker has tainted hundreds of chemicals at the source. Of his first time in the cape and cowl, Keaton remembers vowing that it would also be his last. Ultimately, however, he used that fear to drive his performance. It's just something I have to do. Why? Because nobody else can. Number six, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Jim Carrey. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. There's no denying that Jim Carrey was the perfect actor to bring Dr. Seuss's Christmas-hating Grinch to life, but production hit an early snag that almost ended his involvement. Santa, what's Christmas really about? Vengeance! The first time Carrey had the makeup applied, it took eight and a half hours. He stormed back to his trailer in a rage, telling director Ron Howard that he would have to quit. Help me! I'm feeling... Fortunately, he was persuaded to stay, although according to makeup artist Kazuhiro, Carey took out his frustrations on the crew. Aren't you gonna cuff me? Put me in a chokehold? Blind me with pepper spray? You heard him, officer. This led Hiro to leave production, although he eventually returned at Carey's behest. Although they would eventually get the process down to four hours, in the interim, an expert from the CIA was brought in to teach Carey to withstand torture. And this giant cigarette holder, so, so the yak hair wouldn't go on fire. <laughs> and, uh, the green yak hair. Yeah, the green yak hair that turned inward and went crack. Oh, yeah. It was horrifying. Number five, The Abyss, Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio. Well, we all see what we want to see. The set of The Abyss was a nightmarish experience for most people involved. With the crew and actors diving into a giant water tank, the days were long, exhausting, and wet. It takes discipline and years of training. A lot of people don't appreciate that. One of the straws that nearly broke the camel's back fell while filming the scene in which Master Antonio's character drowns and needs to be resuscitated. As she lay soaking wet on a metal floor, being slapped and screamed at by Ed Harris, the camera ran out of film, but no one told the actors to stop. Fight, God damn it! Fight! 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 <laughs> An understandably frustrated Master Antonio stood up, shouted, we are not animals, and walked off set. Fortunately, she didn't quit the movie, but we can't say we would have blamed her if she had. I guess it worked, didn't it? Yeah, of course it did. Number four, Wayne's World, Mike Myers. I think we'll go with a little Bohemian Rhapsody, gentlemen. Good call. When Mike Myers and Dana Carvey took this popular SNL sketch to the big screen, the end result was an absolute classic. But a disagreement while shooting one of the film's most memorable scenes almost ended production. I see a little silhouette of a man. Got a moose, got a moose, will you do the fandango? The Wayne's World crew famously headbangs to Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody while driving around, but the producers were not keen on licensing the iconic song. They wanted to go with something more recent and cheaper, like Guns N' Roses. Myers put his foot down, though, threatening to walk unless the timeless Queen song was used. He got his way, but just imagine for a second. Welcome to the jungle. We got fun and games. Nope, we didn't think so. Yeah, and monkeys might fly out of my butt. Number three, The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, Ian McKellen. The world is not in your books and maps. It's out there. After appearing in the original The Lord of the Rings trilogy, you shall not pass! Sir 
Sir Ian McKellen returned to portray Gandalf the Grey in the Hobbit prequel series. While clever forced perspective techniques were used in the original trilogy to show the wizard interacting with characters nearly half his size, when shooting in Bag End for The Hobbit, McKellen was shot separately on a green screen. Good morning. What do you mean? Do you mean to wish me a good morning, or do you mean that it is a good morning whether I want it or not? Using some quick CGI magic, the actor was made to appear much taller than his co-stars. For McKellen, however, the experience of acting without his co-stars was immensely frustrating and isolating. As a result, he contemplated not just quitting the movie, but the entire acting profession. Thankfully, Peter Jackson noticed and successfully encouraged McKellen to push through. True courage is about knowing not when to take a life. Number 2. The Birds, Tippi Hedren I sometimes go to bird shops on Fridays. I'm very glad you do. Another demanding director on set, Alfred Hitchcock, insisted that Hedren's fear of birds seem genuine in the film. To achieve his desired result, without Hedren's knowledge, Hitchcock went back on his promise to the actress that the birds would be mechanical and instead used real ones. So, during takes, members of the crew actually threw live birds at the terrified actress. After five days of this treatment, she experienced a breakdown and only returned to set after a doctor-mandated week off to recuperate and rest. Well, I think these were crows. Well, yes, hundreds of them. Yes, they attacked the children, attacked them. Well, I don't know when. But I simply can't leave now, Daddy. A word of advice to any directors, CEOs, managers, or bosses watching. If you want your employees to stick around, probably a good idea to not throw live animals at them without their consent. I hardly think a few birds are going to bring about the end of the world. These weren't a few birds. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Shining, Shelley Duvall Stay away from me! <laughs> I just want to go back to my room! So you think your boss is a control freak? Try working with Stanley Kubrick. The legendary director was notorious for pushing his actors to their limits. And in keeping with that reputation, he drove Shelley Duvall so hard on the set of this 1980 horror film that her hair began to fall out. During filming of the second half of the movie, Duvall was constantly dehydrated and exhausted from all the petrified running, screaming, and crying. Give me the bag. Stop it! Give me the bag. Stop swinging the bag. Please stop! On top of that, in the horrifying scene in which she uses a bat to defend herself against a crazed Jack, Kubrick demanded 127 takes. Duvall has called the experience, quote, almost unbearable. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.